church. How are we today? Anybody stay up late last night? Yes. I must say I had um, quite a struggle internally watching that game. Doc and I <laughs> were texting back and forth. And I kind of assumed Doc's attitude last night when we lose, I was performing. I was rough. I was mad. Um, we got taken to the woodshed, and, and I was just not happy about that. And he, he was the encouraging one. Oh, no, it's not over yet. Calm down. Usually it's just the opposite. But that's how you know God's at work in our lives. Doc's reforming and getting better, and the pastor's backsliding. <laughs> and praise God for reformers. Amen? What I want to talk about this morning is a very serious subject. It's very serious in the life of, of Christians because I think sometimes we take it way too nonchalant. But it's the evolution of, of discipleship. It's the evolution of becoming a Christian. It's, it's what God means when he tells us to step away from the world and step into the light, be transformed into his image, and become Christ-like. For you are not of this world, he says, you are children of mine. We're different. We need to separate ourselves and step apart. For instance, I was mad at a stupid football game. I even changed the channel. But the addiction of that football game Kept making me touch that, you know, flashback button. And it got me. And then I couldn't flash back anymore. I stayed there. But, but the scripture I want to start with this morning is, is found in the book of Ezekiel, <coughs> chapter 36, verse 26. For I will give you a new heart and put my spirit within you, says the Lord. I will remove from you an, your old heart the heart of stone, and give you my heart, the heart of flesh. Well, when that happens, something happens, amen? If, if God would take the anger, the, 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 the bitterness, the, the unforgiveness, if he's willing to take that out of our all of us and replace it with a, with a heart of love and compassion and kindness, then, then our DNA changes, Amen? Who we are changes. The movie last night showed the change. Amen? And, and it's so serious then that, that when God says he's willing to do that and we rely on that blessing, that the change happens. And that the world can see that change. Amen? That the world can see that Christians aren't like the rest of the world. But the problem that happens in that journey is darkness is very <coughs> tempting. Darkness is very, for the moment, fulfilling. It always leaves you empty, but for the moment, huh, it's like a sweet greasy cup. Chocolate and peanut butter. But none of that lasts, you see. It only keeps us out of the game. But when we allow God to truly replace our heart, that change becomes evident in how we treat people and how we love people and how we love the world. The world especially needs the change. See the change. When I stand here and I preach to you, I look at all of you and I say, man, what a blessing it is to have a group of dedicated followers who want to grow in Jesus, who are willing to come back week after week after week, 52 weeks a year, and listen to the pastor talk over and over again about change and transformation, witness and mission, and how we are called by God and united by God to change the world. And, and in our focus verse this morning, um, that was found in the book of Mark, chapter 9, beginning with verse 42. God talks about his provision for believers, especially the young. If anyone causes one of these little ones to stumble, 
Those who believe in me, he says. It would be better for, for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. For if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands that lead you to hell. For the fire never goes out. If your foot causes it to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. For it is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. The worm that eats them does not die, and the fire is not quenched. Everyone should be salted with fire. For salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make anything salty again? Have salt amongst yourselves. And be at peace with others. Now this piece of scripture talks about some radical action, doesn't it? But I, I really don't believe that God's telling us to go get a fork and an axe and mutilate ourselves. But what he's telling us to do is be aware of the temptations of the world that can bind you from my presence in your life. One of the challenges we have is we know what causes us to stumble, but we still dance with it. Amen? I, I had a very, very good friend um, many, many years ago who, who had a strong alcohol addiction. He was one of the finest guitarists that, that I've ever met. But he continued to play in bars. If the temptation is the alcohol. Get rid of the alcohol. Don't dance with it. Billy Joe's song, The Piano Man, talks about someone buys you a drink for free. There's no freedom in a drink if it's an addiction for you. There's no freedom in, in gambling if you go to the casino because you like the show. I love it when people say, I just go to Vegas for the show. Yeah. Cleveland has a whole playhouse theater. Go there. <laughs> when we dance with sin, when we dance with temptation, <laughs> we get burned. Over and over and over again. And, and if, if we're serious about our salvation, then we have to be <clears throat> cognizant and recognize the things that cause us to stumble. Amen? And we have to what and, and, as the scripture says, purge it. Get rid of it. Don't hold on to it. Don't stick it in your pocket. Don't let it be lint. You know, in, in your pants, when you wash them and dry them, and it comes back, you always got a little lint bugger in there, don't you? No matter, no matter how clean you got the filter in the dryer or anything, there's always that, that thing just keeps coming back, amen? Or in your shirts or wherever you're cleaning. But you gotta pick that out, or also that lint bugger becomes a big old wall. And then we go, wall, you know, then, then, it, then it starts sticking to the outside of your clothes. So we have to constantly maintain the ability to recognize, name, and get rid of the sin. Let's not call it anything but what it truly is, the sin that causes us to stumble. That causes us to lose focus of the light and the glory and the transforming, transforming power of Jesus Christ that saved us all. Amen? For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son into this world. Not to condemn it, but to save it through him. So if we keep precluding our vision of Jesus Christ in our life, then how, how are we supposed to ever make the journey complete? How are we ever supposed to transform ourselves so that the world can see something new and something exciting? <laughs> the only thing the devil has until Christ's return is temptation. And the ability to keep throwing it out there and making it look good. Now, I'm not saying Reese cups are bad. <laughs> if you're diabetic, they're not something you want to have around the house. If you're trying to lose weight, definitely not on your healthy menu. But every once in a while, a little angel will bring you one. <laughs> and my dance with temptation is, I can't break her heart, i got to eat. <laughs> is that the right decision? 
Or is the right decision to say, my dear friend who has to sit back in the back and never really get out front, <coughs> save me from my temptation. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't change our motive of operation, change is never going to happen.
coffee so we're all safe together. And we start talking, and sometimes the, stuff, the talk follows the, the, the Bible the, uh, chapter that we're saying, but sometimes it focuses directly on a personal problem or journey in life. And the beautiful thing in that nice setting of four or five or eight of us is that we're all willing to stop and say your problem's real. It's bit us. It's handcuffed us. It's knocked us down. Let's talk about it. Let's pray about it. Let's be there for one another. One of the things I always tell young couples when, when, when the wedding starts, you know, if it's one of those traditionals where the guy hasn't seen the bride for 24 hours and not seen the dress, there's that moment, guys, you're going to remember this, when she steps out with her daddy and the air gets sucked right out of your lungs. You realize that God has given you this beautiful woman to be yours. To love and to honor and to cherish for the rest of your life. And she comes down the aisle dressed in a beautiful dress. <laughs> and I always say to the best man, okay, you're on his left and I'm on his right, so if you see him start to go like that, just close in. <laughs> just put him between our shoulders so that he doesn't go down. And sure enough, yesterday, Sean was standing here, his, his brother Beaver was standing right next to him. And Allison stepped out from behind the door with her daddy. He took two steps in the sun, sunshine here. And I heard him go, mm -hmm. <coughs> and I just went like this. <coughs> and the tears came down his face. And he realized that he wasn't alone. That this guy that he had only met three months ago, was willing to stand there in the battle of fear and anxiety and say, God's got this. We'll survive. And there's something beautiful and precious when a bride and groom come together for the first time and begin their vows. When they look at each other and say, I, John, take you, Jen be my lawfully wedded wife. We can say that. Can we say, I, John, take you, Jesus, to be my Lord and Savior, to follow you where you shall send me, to obey the commands that you will and to purify myself so that the prayers of a righteous man might be powerful and effective to you. Allow me, Lord, to be an instrument of your love, a beacon of your grace, and a tablet of truth that is Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's conclude worship this time. <coughs> By standing, if you're able, or singing another old solid hymn, number 443, the solid rock.
that the foundation will be firm, the anchor will hold on our journey of faith and discipleship. It will never be slow or dead. Go forth in his name, stand in his light, and love one another as he has loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.